Welcome, and thank you for joining us for Coffee with Hillary and Les, brought to you by State of Mind Hypnosis and Training Center, located in the heart of the Kortha Lakes. This is our almost daily community podcast about the mind and how we all might change it in the most simple and helpful ways. Every day we sit staring at the lake, sipping our coffee, having a chat about hypnosis and how to make those meaningful adjustments to our state of mind. Because nothing's more important than your state of mind. We are on the line. We're on the line, man. Foggy day in our minds. Mm-hmm. Insufficient coffee. Yeah, Les forgot to grab cream, so it's all his fault. It is? It is? <laughs> no, it's... It is? Insufficient coffee, and I also... Ate McDonald's yesterday. <gasps> I'm admitting it. I didn't know that. I ate McDonald's. I was hungry, and I went through a drive-through, and I ate <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> and now I'm foggy, and that's supposed to be a surprise to me. And I also had one of those thick smoothie things, not the kind that are really healthy because they're filled with fruit, but the kind that are really gooey because they're filled with. Edible oil product and sugar. sugar. (laughs) But that's an important note, you know. We're learning it, and we were talking about it earlier today. You know, foods have an incredible impact on your mind. You know, people talk a lot today about brain fog, and it's really just indigestible stuff trapped inside your body. Yeah, you know, flowing through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, brain fog. I got a lot of brain fog today. Yeah. And I can hardly wait to get to the office so I can have a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll go for breakfast and amp up her brain fog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm insufficiently caffeined. Uh, so today, what do we talk about? We were going to, th- we thought about this yesterday, and we'll, we'll say, you know, we, people come and meet us. Because they want to make change, yeah. right? It's all about change. It's about being dissatisfied with what is. And sometimes it's dissatisfaction on their own part. Sometimes it's family is dissatisfied with them. Their relationships are not going the way they want them to go. Sometimes it's work colleagues that want to see change. But then they come and they change their mind. They change the programming like any computer. You change the programming and what it does will change. And then people change and then the change doesn't fit into their lives, you know, because they've, because this behaviors and attitudes are so far reaching in everything we do that when the change hits internally, sometimes it doesn't feel like there's room for the change. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so today's about making that space for the change, right? Well, yeah, and I think it's not just making space yourself. I mean, you come to the table motivated to make change, and you want to work on your mind, you know. Um, Every day, you and I are working on it, and I'm working on it even this morning, you know, being reminded of the change I need, right? Need to not eat McDonald's, (laughs) right? There's There's a change. I need to eat better. So what am I doing to allow myself to eat better? Because all I did was find myself driving down the road. I didn't bother to find a way to eat a healthy dinner. And then I just wanted to fill that aching (laughs) hunger (laughs) with something that um, for some reason my mind thinks is good. And my conscious mind is very aware that it's not good. (laughs) But my subconscious mind goes, yum, yum, yum. Yeah. 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 So making change, making room for change, seeing that change will happen. And then what will you do to support that change? And, and then with others, you know, we really do uh, get engaged in relationships. I think uh, the psychologist Harriet Lerner, she said it well. She talked about the dance. The dance, the idea that we do things the same all the time, you know, 
Hillary could just have a certain look on her face and I can see everything that she means and, and is thinking, right? And, huh. and we have these ways of interacting that are the same all the time. And we don't give each other room for change because we don't allow for the dance to change, I guess. It's a good, it's a good book. It's an old book, Harriet mm-hmm. Lerner. Um, and it's, it's hard called, too. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. It's called. Oh, no, 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 What's no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you, 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 you. Um, the dance, um, the dance, one of them is called the dance of anger. And there's, uh, Basically, she just, she writes about seeing relationships as dances where we know our steps and our steps are well practiced and we need to change those steps to, if we want to have a different dance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, um, a lot of people get stuck in the, you know, the dance, I guess, the relationship of, um, the other person uh, so them wanting to change, but then the other person kind of puts them in a box and keeps them in the past and says, you know, in different ways that they're not cha- they're not going to change. You're a, you are who you are, kind of idea, and not giving the person that, you know, that um, that ability to change, or kind of knocking them off. It even if they have changed, if the other person says, you know well, you're not like that, or you can't change, then it sort of puts the other person back at square one in their mind, and they don't feel like they've made any change. But, yeah, I think people are stuck in all kinds of relationships where um, they don't have the space. They don't have the space to change. They feel like they don't have the space to change, right? And and change can be like you said, it's uncomfortable sometimes when you make when you start making these changes, and the body, the mind wants to push you back to feeling comfortable, even though before wasn't comfortable. Um, and so it's it it it, it takes a, a little minute <laughs> to make that change, and um, and sometimes you know other people in your life. They don't like the change because they were comfortable with you being a certain way, right? Well, yeah. And, and you know, when you change and your behavior changes, people are going to react. And although I like to encourage people to pay attention to that because, you know, I've had that experience myself. Uh, virtually all of my clients have had that experience where other people are saying, whoa, what, what happened to you? You seem really different. And you need to welcome those kinds of comments and let them come forward. Mm -hmm. Another thought that I had as you were talking was the the idea that, you know, when you make programming programming changes to a computer and then uh, you allow the old programming to come back, the change dissipates, (laughs) right? It's just gone. Like I've seen clients, they come and we, we do the thing we do and then... They go away and then they fall back into the old thought pattern that they had. Um, and then we got to come back and it's it's almost like it's been reinforced mm-hmm. um, because they're just uncomfortable with being different. Yeah. 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 Even though they, they want the difference, it is uncomfortable to make that change sometimes. A lot of times it is. Mm-hmm. Um, it's worth it when it does finally click, right? But, um, yeah, moving the mind from being uncomfortable and wanting to change, right? But the body and mind sort of feeling like that's safe. It's safe to be there because we've lived in that for however many years. And then once you start to make the change, the mind and body go, oh, wait a minute, this doesn't look safe, even though it is very safe. You know, this doesn't look like yesterday, so let's let's move this person back into yesterday as far as we can take them so that, you know, the body and mind feels safe. Um, yeah. But it's funny, it's funny how it wants you to feel safe. The, the, mind, the mind always wants the best for you, but it doesn't look like that, right? It, it always wants you to be safe, but in that idea of safety, 
in what we do to ourselves or, you know, what we think about ourselves at the subconscious level. Anyway, it's, it's, it's not great. (laughs) Well, yeah. And that subconscious level is very immature. It's, it's obviously, you know, it's, it's programmed you to do certain things. Um, and when, when you try to change that, the subconscious mind gets a little worried. It knows that the strategies it's been using haven't necessarily been effective, but it's the only strategies. They are the only strategies the subconscious mind knows. And that's why so much of what we do is changing the subconscious view of things, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And let's, let's take that as the segue to the reframe for today. Um, The reframe for today, I think, is... Uh, to look at yourself and know that who you were when you were five years old um, is nothing like who you are today. Who you were when you were 15 years old is nothing like who you are today. And who you were at 15 was very different from when you were five. And who you are at 25 is markedly different from who you were when you were 15. Right? Mm -hmm. And so... Just embrace the idea that you are a function of change. You are a process. I am not a thing. I am a process. I am constantly getting better. I am constantly getting smarter. I am not a thing. I am not static. I am a process. Mm -hmm. And then you can be more comfortable with the idea that Five years from now, you're going to be different than who you are now. And then you can start to invite change in. And if in your relationships, you can then invite that in. You know, we are a family of whatever form you want. We are uh, a couple, a relationship. We are friends. And as we change, our friendship changes. As we change, our family changes. And we're open to that. And we try to be a group of people who now see themselves as an active process of change. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's important. And if we stopped changing, life would be pretty boring, right? <laughs> I always tell clients, you're, uh, you know, the thing that comes up um, a lot, probably in almost every session, <laughs> is... Um, this idea that we're changing, but also that we're doing the best that we can with what knowledge that we know at the time. And even at, you know, 80 years old, you're still doing that. You're still changing, hopefully, right? Mm -hmm. And you're still um, working with what you know and not to beat yourself up for, you know, maybe looking at your past and, and um, and saying, well, why did I do that? How could I have done that? I'm mad at myself for doing that. You know, once you realize that every version of you, every moment of you is just working with the knowledge that you have at the time, and that knowledge is usually based on growing up and <laughs> your childhood, um, and, and uh, you're only doing the best that you can with the knowledge that you know at the time. And that again, it's 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 into your old age too, right? Yeah, I don't know that there's a day that you're not learning something. Yeah. Change, make room for change. Mm-hmm. So this is the time when we would answer questions. Do you have any questions? No. Anybody send you any questions Today. by email? Nope. Anybody ask anything about hypnosis by email? Nope. Son of a gun. (laughs) Well, please uh, send us your questions. Uh, We would love to take this time every day to just answer questions. It might be about hypnosis. It might be about something else. Um, We're wide open. Ask any question you want. We'll give you whatever kind of answer we have available. Uh, Send questions easily to our email at info at somhypnosis.com. Um, you can also call us. The phone numbers are there. 
uh, you can uh, reply to one of our, uh, make a comment on one of our social media posts. There's lots of ways for you to reach out to get to us in an anonymous way, that if it makes you more comfortable. Mm-hmm. And ask us questions, because we want to answer them. Yeah. Events this Saturday. This Saturday is intuitive self-hypnosis. It's going to be fun and interesting, and we'll see what the bodies tell us. Yeah. <laughs> and we're holding these info nights, um, just information about hypnosis. It's basically an explanation of the sort of the history and process of hypnosis and the hypnosis that we do and, and the impact that it could have. And it's just there for information purposes. Um, we just feel like the best thing we can do is make you more comfortable with the idea as you're wondering whether or not hypnosis might be for you. Or some of you are listening and you've already been to us and you want to send a friend. And that might be a really great way to do it. Just get your friend and come to an information night and we'll have some fun and they'll get to meet us and they'll get more comfortable. And if they want hypnosis, great. And if they don't, that's great too. Uh, You're just now a little smarter and you understand what it is. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) And we hold those uh, once a month on a Thursday. And if you want to figure or find out when the next one is, just head on over to the website www that's very 90s of me (laughs) 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 www.somhypnosis.com s-o-m m M as in mary (laughs) m as in mind (laughs) hypnosis.com that's where we are on the line (laughs) on the line there (laughs) (laughs) got anything else for today uh no I mean, y- yesterday I uh, uploaded a bunch of meditations to the website. Uh, I shared one on our socials. Um, but yeah, if you want to go listen to a meditation, I've got two minute, five minute, ten minute, and a twenty minute one there. So they're nice to listen to on a break or something like that, just to get you started. All right. Right. Hey. <laughs> Time to find more coffee, <laughs> wherever that might be. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. We hope you enjoyed today's podcast and that maybe it helped even a little. If you have any questions, we would love you to send them along in an email to info at somhypnosis.com. Thank you for being part of the State of Mind community. For more information about hypnosis and the various online or in-person services we provide, please visit our website, www.somhypnosis.com. The link will be in the notes below. While you are there, why don't you book a free one-hour journey meeting with Hillary or Les to learn more about what hypnosis is and how you might use it to make your life what you want it to be. Bye for now. Talk to you tomorrow.